Welcome. Hello, hello. Hi. Hello, early birds. Hi, everybody. It's a little quiet here at the aquarium, or at least it was when I first started this video. So I thought I would start out in the public view, but it's getting a little more crowded right now. So I'll hang out here for a second before we head behind the scenes into our jelly lab to learn more about sea jellies that call the aquarium home. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Oh my goodness, it got so loud out here all of a sudden. As you might be able to hear, we are open to the public and you can come visit the aquarium in person. You just need to make a reservation before you do. Hello everybody, welcome, welcome. Let me know where you're watching from today. Oh, some good questions coming in already. We're gonna learn all about jellies. Here at the aquarium in just a few minutes, we're gonna go behind the scenes to our jelly lab to learn more. Hello, hi everybody. Hello in Kansas, the UK, North Carolina, Catalina, shout out to Catalina, Tennessee, Kansas City, amazing. In Canada, Alabama, that's incredible. Hello to our other people in California, Los Angeles, of course, Texas, Australia, that's amazing. Welcome everybody. We're going to head behind the scenes to learn more all about sea jellies today. So here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, we call them sea jellies and not jellyfish. Does anyone know why we call them sea jellies instead of jellyfish? It's the same reason we call sea stars sea stars instead of starfish. Does anyone know? Because they aren't fish. That is correct. Jellyfish are not fish, so here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, we call them sea jellies. And we're going to learn more. Oh, you all are so smart. But you all, you got this. <laughs> we're going to learn more about sea jellies in just a few minutes. All right, everybody, who is ready to go behind the scenes and learn all about jellies today here on TikTok Live? Let's see some blue hearts in the chat if you want to go behind the scenes and learn more about sea jellies today. Right now, you are watching our Pacific sea nettles inside of our Northern Pacific Gallery. <laughs> And lots of good questions are coming in. We're going to head behind the scenes with Josh, who is an aquarist here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, to learn all about these jellies. So lots of blue hearts coming through. I love to see it. I hope everyone's having an awesome day, and I'm so excited for you to learn more about jellies. I learn something new about jellies every time we do one of these live streams. And just a reminder that we are live every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific here on TikTok Live. All right, it's officially time for us to head behind the scenes. If you visited the Aquarium of the Pacific before, you might know where we are. We are inside our Northern Pacific Gallery. That is our classic Pacific Sea Nettle exhibit. And we're going to pass by our moon jellies and say hello to some baby moon jellies. Those are some itty bitty moon jellies. How cool you have a tattoo of that jelly. That's amazing. All right. And we are going to head behind the scenes to Jelly Lab. Let's go. You are officially behind the scenes here at the Aquarium of the Pacific very cool and this is jelly lab and the leader of jelly lab is back here hi josh hi, this is aquarius josh say hi to tiktok hi tiktok tiktok say hi to josh everybody <laughs> hello hello yes we are the aquarium of the pacific in long beach california all right josh what do you do back here what happens in jelly land so this is uh, uh the backstage band exhibit where we actually raise and uh, pretty much grow up all the jellies that we have on exhibit. It's like um, a jelly farm. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> so at any given time, we have thousands of jellies that we have backstage just waiting to, to go out to our exhibits. Um, and so a lot of my job is actually tending uh, to our cultures and to our young individuals 
um, getting them ready for, for display. Very cool. So what do you have happening back here today? Uh, so the first thing I'm going to show you is something really cool is we have a baby comb jelly. <gasps> a baby jelly! But it's got to be teeny tiny if you're looking at it with a microscope, sure right? It is. So is everybody ready to see a baby jelly? Oh, screen there. He's about half a millimeter right now. He's a week old. I say he, but they actually have both sexes. <laughs> um, and that's the miniature version, the larval version of uh, what's called a warty cone jelly, which is actually what you can see in the beaker here. So it looks completely different as an yeah, adult. Yeah, that's a lot different. So there's the baby about a week old, you said, right? Yep. And then how old is this guy? This guy's probably along the lines of eight months old. Eight months um, old. Let me put my guys, hand up next to him just so you can see how big he is. Yeah, he's about three Pretty inches. Pretty big, yeah. Um, these guys are called lobate tinafores, meaning they have these big lobes, uh, which they use to capture prey uh, because they can eat actually large items such as larval fish and uh, larval uh, shrimp. So these guys Very are ferocious cool. predators. A ferocious predator. Very cool. And how big is the one that we saw? That's just like a millimeter, right? Did he you was say? about half a millimeter. Half a size. millimeter. And that's that's Teeny pretty big tiny. for this guy, actually. Yeah. Uh, when they were first produced, uh, I can't see them with the naked eye. Oh, uh, wow. And so I can only check on them with the use of the microscope. I can kind of see him floating around right there. If my camera will focus. There he is. There you go. That's an itty bitty. Oh! amazing technology <laughs> there is a itty bitty comb jelly right there about a week old and then here is what it looked like in about eight months pretty cool right TikTok? oh my gosh this is so cool okay josh what else do you have happening back here so yeah the further uh, down the line you go here we have what do we call our, our grow out tanks for our young jellies um we have our egg yolk jellies in this tank these guys eventually will get to about the size of uh, uh down the line you go here we have what do we call our, our grow out tanks for our young jellies um, we have our egg yolk chilies in this tank. These guys eventually will get to about the size of uh, about a meter in bell size, so they get massive. Yeah. Um, they're a big predator for in the jelly world. They actually like to eat other jellies, uh, and there's Whoa. no other jellies that these guys wouldn't try to consume. <laughs> so these, are, these guys are actually pretty endemic to Southern California. It's not uncommon to see these guys in certain times of the year, especially around Catalina. Um, so yeah, they're super cool. Um, next door, we actually have our purple striped sea nettles. You can kind of see a big group of them at the top there. Yeah. Uh, as they're kind of kind of pulsing up at the top. Um, these guys are also really cool predators that will eat other jellies. Um, we display them down in our SoCal area because this is another one that is endemic to the Southern California coast. Um, these guys will get massive as well. They can get tentacles up to 20 feet long uh, and have a gorgeous purple and white belt. That's so cool. So they start off all pretty translucent. They yes. kind of look the same almost too. Is that pretty true for yeah, that's majority pretty realistic of jellies? Yeah, that's pretty for the majority of uh, a lot of them actually. A lot of the Skypezone jellies that is. That's the type of jellies that these guys are. Mm -hmm. um, where they start to develop their color once they get about, uh, I would say maybe uh, three, four inches in, in okay. size. So you can actually see uh, larger individuals from the same batch up here uh, yeah. these guys were the overachievers that grew a little faster whoa those and, are the same yeah, birthdays they're, they're from the same group wow um you always have a couple that will uh grow much quicker than a lot of the others oh that's fascinating i didn't and know that so we'll cater to those guys because realistically those are the ones that are going to be making it to display first mm -hmm. um, so i separate those guys out and just let them grow and grow and grow they really are overachievers look at how big they are tiktok so these guys are the same batch as these guys. Fascinating. And Josh, so we're seeing a lot of uh, interesting terminology. A lot of people know these jellyfish. Right. And I was talking to TikTok a little while ago and we don't call them jellyfish here at the aquarium. We call them sea jellies. So I will 100% slip and call it a jellyfish <laughs> because that's the way it goes. Because it's natural. But I mean, yep. mm -hmm. sea jellies is, is what we commonly call them because they're not fish. Um, they're actually a plankton. They're the largest species of plankton in the world. Um, and the, what makes them a plankton is they don't swim. So they just drift along with the current. Um, and uh, yeah, they're actually couldn't be less related to, uh, to fish. <laughs> Fascinating. Okay, cool. What do we have next? So our next tank actually is my favorite jellies that I'm working Josh's with. Josh's fish. Um, which uh, you're going to actually say, see predator and prey in the same tank. Yeah. Um, these big boys here, 
are called uh, tinafores. They're uh, called Baroe tinafores. That is the genus of their scientific name, Baroe. Um, they don't really have a common name. Uh, and these guys actually, the only thing they eat are other comb jellies. So I'll actually raise one species to feed to the other. <laughs> um, and what's really exciting about these guys is that we have these out on display right now. And it's the first time that we've ever displayed them. But I was actually able to culture them backstage, so I was reproducing them. And it was certainly the first time we've ever reproduced uh, Burroughy cone jellies before. That's incredible and such a feat. It's got to be so complicated to get these guys to reproduce, I imagine. Yes, um, it, it was very challenging. This is something that I've been working on for four or five years. Uh, and the biggest challenge that I found with these guys is actually uh, uh, reproducing enough food to feed them. Um, because the biggest thing to get gets them to spawn in the wild is just having unlimited food. It's eating good. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> so that's the biggest thing that, that was the biggest challenge. So speaking of eating good, this guy definitely ate good. So you can see that we have the um, warty comb jellies. Where, where'd one go? There's one there. And the burroughies? Yep. Burroughies up here. So they're more cylindrical in shape, kind of like a little suddenly ate good. So you can see that we have the um, warty comb jellies. Where, where'd one go? There's one there. And the bur burroughies? Yep. Burroughies up here. So they're more cylindrical in shape, kind of like a little spaceship. The warties are kind of like a helmet hat looking shape. Yeah, exactly. Would, would that be right? Yeah. And so you can see that this burroughy has one in his tummy. And I actually, Josh shared a video the other day with me of them actually eating. And it's really cool to watch. It's really awesome. Um, lots of questions coming in let's get to a couple of them before we move on any further so we just met the egg yolk jelly uh purple striped jelly and then the broe and cone jellies can you talk about the stings on these guys and is there a difference between stinging and shocking do any of these animals shock uh yeah there's actually a big difference so no jellies actually shock mm -hmm. um they can give you a sting that is feels like the equivalent to a shock um, but but there's no like electrical discharge. Okay. Uh, what it is is uh, they sting you involuntarily with what's called a nematocyst, which is like a microscopic harpoon that when you touch it, it fires off into your skin, injecting your skin with venom. Ouch. Um, and in the wild, I do not touching the purple striped jellies or the egg yolk jellies okay. um, because they can give you a nasty sting. Ouch. Um, cultured specimens for whatever reason don't sting as badly oh, really as the uh, the wild caught specimens um so i don't have to worry about it as much but uh they certainly the adults will will certainly give you a nice rash if uh you come in contact with them too often fascinating and then um, the question of the hour that everyone wants to know yes. how often have you been stung uh i've gotten stung so many times that i can't even pretend to, <laughs> to quantify it and what's the worst sting the the worst sting mm -hmm. so there's two occasions for for what i would say my worst sting. so the indonesian sea nettle which i don't have right now mm -hmm. uh, we displayed those guys a few years back they they had the worst sting out of any jelly that i've ever oh found. my goodness uh, it was the equivalent to uh it, it to me it was exactly like if you've ever accidentally brushed into a cactus and it got you. Ouch. That's exactly what it felt like. Ouch. Um, another occasion is in my early in my career, I was collecting a wild egg yolk jelly, and I collected them These with gloves guys. on. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I was out in the ocean and I took my school of oh, no. and I wiped it oh, across no. my eyes, spreading all the nematocysts through my eye. And that was incredibly stupid and it was incredibly painful. <laughs> that does not sound fun at all. Okay, yeah. so that's fascinating. So when they sting you, it can remain on your hands or on yes. an object uh, after the fact. That's kind of a, a big thing that we like to, to tell people just because oftentimes if you see jellies washed ashore, mm -hmm. um, don't touch them because they still have the ability to sting you even if they're dead. Mm -hmm. That's a big thing for TikTok because I see some TikToks of people picking up jellies on the beach and we definitely don't want to do that yes please don't do that please don't do that all right let's get back to learning all about jellies so we um these guys here i know are a t we call them jellies but they aren't true jellies right right so um, what disqualifies them from being a true sea jelly so so true sea jellies are like our egg yolk and purple striped jellies um these guys are classified as tinafores mm -hmm. and the reason that they're not considered true jellies is they don't have those harpoon like nematocysts used to capture prey uh, cone jellies actually have uh, sticky cells called coloblasts, so the prey actually sticks to them uh, for them to eat it. 
so uh, uh, yeah, so these guys are really far off, not related to true jellies. Uh, Tina pours that in. Fascinating, and you can see they're kind of pretty in their own little rainbows here. What's this all about? Yeah, so you'll actually see some really cool looking uh, uh, colorization in these yeah. guys. Yeah. And what it is is, uh, so they're called comb jellies, and what's going on there is uh, those are called comb rolls, and each comb is kind of like <laughs> like a flap, mm -hmm. and then they flap up and down real fast, and that's what's actually moving the jelly. That's how it's able to use locomotion. And when it's doing that, it's actually uh, throwing the light uh, from the light through a prism, creating that really beautiful color. Yeah, it's uh, so really a lot, pretty. I hear a lot of people ask if they're if they're fluorescing or mm -hmm. if they're uh, uh, you know creating light. But, but they're not. They're actually just uh, reflecting the, the light from the top. It's really just like a prism. Yeah. Um, and do you think it attracts predators or anything that could possibly eat it? So, this motion does not. Mm -hmm. But if you turn off the lights and you kind of pop them, they will fluoresce. Oh, wow. But it's a different color. Mm -hmm. And that actually can, can attract things that it would actually eat. Amazing. Very cool. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, okay, we're back. We're back. Hi, everybody. Um, sorry about that. Water and Wi-Fi are not the best of friends, so we might go in and out of service once in a while, but stick with me. Thank you all so much for staying with us today. I was just thanking our donation, our donors. Thank you so much for your support here on TikTok. We are live every Tuesday at 3 p.m., and you always come through and show our nonprofit aquarium so much love with your donations. And just so you know, every single dollar that you donate goes right back to the animals here at the Aquarium of the Pacific and supports our conservation and education program. So thank you so much. All right, Josh, what else do you have to show us? Oh, well, if you kind of come further back this way, um, we go even smaller than what we were showing before. Teeny tiny, These guys. These are our cultures. Um, let's see if I can get you... Whoa! So these can are you actually... take it off for a second? Mm -hmm. So that looks like absolutely nothing. And then the second we put the light up, look at all those itty bitty guys. So these guys are moon jellies, which are about a week old. Um, we produced uh, quite a few of these for our multiple exhibits and our moon jelly touch tank. And uh, these guys, like I said, they're, they're about a week, they're about a millimeter, and they'll grow to about 12 inches uh, bell size. And uh, yeah, we'll grow these out in, these, in this tank. And then as they grow, I move them into a bigger tank, which is behind you. You can see some of the other guys, which are Whoa. Uh, a few months older. Put so, my hand up just so you can see how big they are. They're still pretty little. Yeah, but uh, eventually these guys will make their way out to our, our moon jelly touch thing. Amazing. And so if you watch our latest video on our feed, it is all about moon jellies and how here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, they create a symphony thanks to a program that we're able to use. So definitely go check it out. All right, what else do we have hanging so out back here? So here, actually, um, you wouldn't think this, but these are actually sea jellies. Um, this is the form which we call the polyp form. Um, what happens with sea jellies and the reproduction is males and females will, will release their gametes into the water, which will turn into larvae, fertilize eggs, um, and then sink to the bottom of the ocean. And then from there, it'll turn into what's called this polyp, which looks like a little baby anemone. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they will actually start uh, making clones of themselves. Um, and then when the seasons are right, it'll metamorphosize and start releasing little baby jellies. And so on these petri dishes are, are the uh, polyps of different species. So you can kind of see, oh, that's it. Wow, but, yeah, uh, we can totally see it. But yeah, so I tend to these guys quite often, uh, cleaning them with little paintbrushes, cool. uh, and they'll produce little jellies like these guys. These wow. are egg jellies, which we initially grow out in these critter keepers that are screened in. Um, and then as they grow, we give them a little bit more flow and a little bit more flow and bigger and bigger systems um, and eventually make them out, uh, out to the exhibit. That's fascinating. Let's talk about jelly lifespans for a second. Sure. So how long is it going to take for these little teeny tiny guys to grow up into the sea jellies that we see out on um, in the habitat? So these guys, it'll probably take about six months mm -hmm. of backstage grow out time before they're ready for, for exhibit. Wow. And that differs due to the species. Uh, these guys are pretty quick growing, mm -hmm. um, so I can get them out there pretty quick. Some of the hydrozoan jellies, which are the little guys, mm -hmm. um, are actually, I can get them out there in uh, a few weeks because wow. they're so, such a fast grower. Yeah, amazing. Very cool. And then how many jellies come out of one polyp? Uh, again, it depends on the species. Mm -hmm. With our egg yolk jellies, we get about four. Um, with moon jellies, we can get up to 25 to 30. Mm -hmm. um, 
and then that polyp will continue to live and then kind of uh, uh, start to reproduce again and and then again they can uh, give us more or more little jellies very uh, cool and we do run into a situation where we have more jellies than we can actually make displays for mm -hmm. uh, and when that happens what I can actually do is I have a very solid network amongst the other aquariums in the United States. Mm -hmm. And I can send out an email saying, hey, I got all these jellies, who wants them? We have too many jellies. Yep. And Come and get them. And we can actually share with other <laughs> aquariums uh, and we can actually trade species uh, that another aquarium can do well at, that we can trade with them and get, get new species for ourselves. That's amazing. So what's the newest species of jelly we have back here? Uh, the Baroe jellies. That would that are be the Baroe yeah. jellies who we were just meeting a little while ago. Oh, I think one of them is grabbed one while we were talking. no that's that guy down there yeah. so these guys if you missed it they ate the other jellies which is really metal really cool yeah. <laughs> all right everybody that was awesome we learned so much i want to um say give a shout out to our donors thank you so much to lizard and storytell at heart thank you so much for supporting our nonprofit aquarium with your donations today we appreciate it so much 100 percent of your donation goes right back to the aquarium of the pacific and the 12,000 animals that call us home including all of our sea jellies today. This is so cool. All right, Josh, question yes, for you. Perfect. If someone wants to work with jellies like you do, any advice for them? Uh, yeah, the, the best way to get a head start uh, working in, with jellies or realistically in any zoo or aquarium field is to start volunteering from an early age. Um, the, the best thing I can recommend is, is start early with volunteering and then get those unpaid internships. Um, to work with the animals themselves, you do have to have a bachelor's degree uh, in some sort of biological field. Mm -hmm. not, they're not particular about it being marine biology. Like myself, I got my degree in zoology uh, because I didn't know if I wanted to concentrate on marine stuff or if I wanted to concentrate on terrestrial stuff or even freshwater stuff. Um, but I fell in love with jellies um, working. That's the best route that I can recommend is get lots and lots of uh, volunteer hours and get lots and lots of internships. And it really gets you put in the door and really gets you noticed. Very cool. Do you have to provide your own peanut butter? Yeah, good one. <laughs> thank you, TikTok, for inspiring that. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, Josh, thank you teaching us all about jellies behind the scene yeah, of our Northern Pacific about. Gallery. We're going to go meet some tropical jellies now. Um, sorry to uh, ditch you, but <laughs> thank you again. And before we do, thank you, Josh. Everybody say bye, Josh. Before we head over to our tropical species, I'm going to climb up above one of my favorite jelly exhibits. And I'm going to do so one-handed, but still very safe, very elegantly climb up this ladder very safely. Okay, here we go. So when we started this live stream, I was outside of this habitat, right out there inside of our Northern Pacific Gallery, looking into our Pacific sea nettles here in the Northern Pacific Gallery. And now I'm above their habitat and it's so beautiful. They are so relaxing to watch. And just so everybody knows, there's actually a webcam inside of the exhibit. This webcam right here, it streams 24 seven. And you can actually watch this very, very peaceful exhibit anytime you want. And that link is in the link in my bio. If you wanna head over there after I'm done talking to you because I don't want you to leave yet. We still have so much to learn about sea jellies. A question I get all the time is what happens when these jellies with really, really long stringy tentacles um, get tangled up? And actually Josh and our Aquarius team are able to untangle them very delicately and they make sure <laughs> to do so. My moderator is teasing me, everyone. Um, <laughs> and another question I get is what would happen if I jumped in? If I jumped in here, it would not feel good. We have sea jellies here at the Aquarium of the Pacific that you can touch. These are jellies we do not want to touch. Josh has told me that these guys feel like a bee sting and knock on wood. That's not wood. I have never been stung by a bee, so I don't know what that would feel like and I don't want to find out and get in trouble at work. So I'm not gonna jump in today, um, but maybe we'll touch some jellies in a little bit, some jellies that are okay to touch. You can touch moon jellies if you visit the Aquarium of the Pacific at our Moon Jelly Touch Lab. <laughs> you guys are mean. Um, and you can do so if you visit the aquarium, which you can right now in person, you can come visit the sea jellies and all other 12,000 animals here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. All right, I'm gonna head down and we are going to head over to our tropical jellies. Everyone, are you having fun? Have you learned anything yet? I've learned something already and I work here and I talk to these people every single day. Okay, now I'm climbing down the ladder elegantly, <laughs> gracefully, very safely, not going to fall on TikTok Live. All right, TikTok. If you're enjoying the stream so far, 
you can share it with your friends here on TikTok. Um, I also saw some comments about people saying that they can't donate. And that's totally fine. A great way to support our nonprofit is by commenting, sharing our videos, sharing our live stream with your friends, tuning in every week at 3 p.m. on Tuesdays, and learning all about the aquarium and the animals that call us home. All right. So as I travel through the aquarium to get to our tropical side, I might lose service here and there. But please stay with me. And maybe we can say hi to an otter right now. Let's go see. The aquarium is currently open to the public. So you might hear some people talking in the background. Let's see if we can say hi to Groot. Hello, little Groot. Groot is a giant Pacific octopus. We're going to see him on a future TikTok live. Hey, thanks so much for the donation. Anonymous, thank you for your $5 donation. Thank you so much for your support. All right, should we take a peek at otters, everyone? Should we go say hi to them before we head to our tropical species jellies? I'm not going to try and get in the way of our guests here. But the aquarium is home to three southern sea otters. And we're going to see if we can say hi to them. Let's see. Let's hang out right here for a second, TikTok. <laughs> this has been so much fun. Is everyone having a good time? Let me know if you're enjoying this live stream so far. We're going to hang out in front of otters for a second and see if we can say hi to one of our otters. Hi, Sam. Say hi to TikTok. No. We're trying to see if we can see an otter on our way to tropical jellies. Sometimes. Oh, there's one. Who do we have right there? Which one are you? Oh, you got a toy. Yep. Playing with it. Shoving it in. Yep. Small crevices. Yep. Mm-hmm. Who's that there? So that is Millie. That's Millie. That's our youngest sea otter here at the yeah. aquarium. She's five years old. Oh my gosh, she's being she's being very funny. I'm a little mischievous. Thank you, Sam. Yeah. We'll see you on a future TikTok live. Everybody say bye, Sam. Bye, <laughs> all right, TikTok. Enough of otters. We're all about jellies today. Otters will make an appearance soon here on TikTok Live. So make sure you're following us. We're live every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific. And we are officially behind the scenes donation thank you so much very beige back very exciting so as i travel through this section i have a feeling i'm going to lose service please stay with me we're going to learn all about tropical jellies in just a second if you're just joining us welcome we're here at the aquarium of the pacific in long beach california although i am behind the scenes right now walking through our dun 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 hi jen i don't have service yet oh there we go now i have service hi jen Everybody on TikTok, say hi to Jen. Hi. Hello. Hi. What you doing back here? Uh, we've got some really cool stuff going on. Ooh. So it came at the perfect time. Oh, yay. Good. Yeah. So this is a little example of how we keep baby jellies um, before we actually have little Medusa that pop off. So it's something called a polyp. It's a little hard to see, but all these little teeny tiny pink things, Yeah. those are polyps. Amazing. So it's just a pre-jelly, essentially. A pre-jelly. Yeah, so this is really similar to what a coral looks like. Mm -hmm. If you looked under a microscope, it would be just a colony of polyps. And because they're closely related, jellies actually do have a similar part of their life that is just like a coral. Wow. Yeah, and right now we've actually got a small baby jelly that's about to pop off of the polyps. Oh, wow. Yeah, so right here. If you see something kind of moving around and really frantically pulsing. Yeah, we can totally see them. Yeah, oh, that my is goodness. a tiny little baby jelly. So basically what happens is the polyp starts to form layers and every once in a while that top layer just pops off. So it's a type of asexual reproduction. And that polyp can continuously create layers and pop off little baby jellies. Oh my goodness, look at him go. So yeah. how long until he's fully out of there you think? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> we're we're going to see. It kind of depends on each little individual of fire. Yeah. Hopefully he won't be struggling for he too long. He looks motivated. We've got one up here too, right there. So you got a couple. Yeah, this is amazing. We're going to have some new baby jellies soon. That's so cool. Yeah, and basically we just kind of wait for them to do that. It's a process called strobilation mm -hmm. when it actually pops off the polyp. And once it does that, we can take them and move them to a tank that's more appropriate for them. Amazing. It's kind of so, like hatching out of an egg in a way, right? Oh, yeah. And so all I'll do is basically look for some in one of our polyp tanks. And sure enough, we've got little babies in here. Wow, look at them go. Look at those teeny tiny guys floating around. My camera's having trouble focusing. Oh, there we go. Yeah. You can totally see them. 
Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, so then I'll just bring them over to a tank that's a little more suitable. Put them in and they can join all of their little baby jellyfish friends. Look at baby jelly friends. Look at all these teeny tiny babies, everyone. So cool. And what kind of jellies are these? So these are spotted lagoon jellies. It's called mustigias. It's a fancy name for them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, these are the ones that you would find like in Palau, the Indo-Pacific. They're kind of a shallow coastal water jelly. They do require a lot of sunlight. I'm sure you can see we have super bright lights Yeah, these here. are really bright. And there is actually a reason for that. They've got a really cool thing living inside of them called zooxanthellae. Mm -hmm. If you're familiar with corals, you might know that word already because corals also have zooxanthellae. And those are photosynthetic organisms that absorb sunlight and create energy for the jelly. Amazing. And does this species sting? They do, they but do. it's very mild compared to like our nettles, some of the jellies you might have seen earlier. Mm -hmm. So for most people, you wouldn't really have that big of a reaction to them. Fascinating. And so at this stage, this teeny tiny stage, are they able to sing? No, not at this stage. Not yet. You're not really going to notice anything in terms until of stings until they get a little bit over bigger. there. Oh, yeah. so cool. Okay, so at this stage, what are they eating? How are they growing up big and so strong? So right now they're eating teeny tiny organisms. Mm -hmm. Things like rotifers, which we grow in house, and then something called copepods. So it doesn't look like much, just some weird floating dots, yeah. but those are actually little organisms. Teeny tiny animals. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we'll give them that food about three times a day. Nice. And then as they grow up and get bigger, guys. which it'll generally take about five to seven days before they reach a size that's appropriate to kind of move on up mm -hmm. to a bigger enclosure. And then we can start feeding them baby brine shrimp. Amazing. Yeah. So this is one step up. You said this is like... How many days old probably here? These actually I just transferred over here today. Amazing. So they're only like one to three days old. Wow, one to three yeah. day old teeny tiny and jellies. These are all at about a week. So I'm just yeah, gonna put my hand up so you can see just how small they are. Here's about a week old. Yeah, and most of these, these can eat brine shrimp guys. now. So that's what we're feeding right now. Yay, look at them go. Uh, yeah, and you'll kind of notice some of them might still be a little bit orange yeah. from their lunchtime feed. So that's just the brine that they ate earlier. And you can just see it in the Yeah, some of them over here have a little bit of orange yeah, to them too. Yeah. That's amazing. Okay. They, they grow really fast because again, they've got that zozan belly. Mm -hmm. So as long as they have adequate artificial sunlight, they're going to grow really, really fast, which is awesome. Amazing. And so what do these guys look like when they're all grown up? So we have a couple of grown ups over here. So these are the adults. Wow. They've gotten much more beautiful and frilly. Yes, <laughs> look at these jellies. So these are the spotted lagoon jellies once yep. again. Yeah, and, and these are get bigger than this as well. They'll get even bigger. Like yeah. Amazing. This is so yeah. cool. So these are my favorite species of jellies because they have polka dots. Aren't they cute? And those frilly arms. And those really frilly cool. arms. <laughs> They're gorgeous. They're so cool. And then tell us again about these jellies. Where can they be found in the wild? Usually it's around the Indo-Pacific, so tropical warm waters. And because they do require sunlight in order to just grow and to eat and get energy, you're going to only find them in like tropical waters where the water is very clear and they can get a lot of sunlight. Fascinating. Yeah. I see this one kind of has some like dark blue in there. So I know we have some that have some blue features. Yeah. Um, what is the difference between the one with blue and the one without blue on them? Honestly, it's just pigmentation of the jelly. They're kind of like us. They can be all kinds of different colors. So Beautiful. Sometimes, especially when we go see uh, what we have on exhibit right now, you'll notice they come in a lot of different colors as well. That's so cool. All right, getting a lot of questions. Are these guys poisonous? They are not poisonous. Uh, you would have to eat something that was poisonous for it to harm you. Yeah. These are actually venomous, which is a little bit different. So when something's venomous, it has to inject the venom into you versus eating something. So that's the difference between poisonous and venomous. So these are technically venomous. They have something called nidocytes, which are stinging cells. Mm -hmm. And that's why anything in the phylum Nidaria is called that because they have stinging cells called nidocytes. Oh, fascinating. Yeah. And then how long does this species of jelly live? This one usually lives about like one to three years. Okay, yeah, that's a pretty long time for a jelly. Pretty short lived in general. Yeah, that's a pretty long time though. I feel like a lot of jellies, um, maybe I'm wrong, that we have here at the aquarium typically live about a year or less, right? Yeah, and we do yeah. tend to see them live a little bit longer here just because they do have really good care, zero predators. Yeah, pretty <laughs> very good. controlled environment. Yeah. Pretty good deal here. Yeah. And so what do these guys eat now that they're all grown up? I'm gonna put my hand next to them so you can see just yeah. how big they are. 
So the primary diet, once they get to this size, is baby brine shrimp. Mm -hmm. So that's what's called sea monkeys. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll feed them at two days old. They're just the right size for a jelly like this. They can Very also cool. eat other things like cocoa pods, rotifers, but the primary thing we feed them is baby brine shrimp. Fascinating. Hey, I want to thank everyone so much for donating. Thank you so much to Curly Dog, Charlie, Christy, Boosted, the Anonymous Donors, Lizard, and Storyteller at Heart. Thank you so much for supporting our nonprofit aquarium. You guys are amazing. The Jelly say thank you too, even though you can't hear them. Okay, let's recap what we saw back here. Um, we started out with pretty much every, we've seen every stage of life yeah. of Jelly just right here. This is really, really cool. We'll have to make a TikTok about this. Um, so we have the polyp stage here. Let's check in on that little guy who is getting ready to pretty much hatch. There he is right oh, there. Still struggling. Still, <laughs> still working on it. Everybody say some encouraging words. Let's give a round of applause to this jelly who's going to be born soon. <laughs> is that the right term? Born, hatched? Uh, strobilated. Strobilated. <laughs> yeah, that totally <laughs> rolls off the tongue. Very, very cool. Um, and then uh, we see next about a two days old. One yeah, to two days old. One to three days, yeah. One to three days old. Here are these teeny tiny little guys that my camera's having trouble focusing on. And then about a week old, right? Yep. Back here. And then how long from here to here? Uh, usually it's about one to two weeks. One to two weeks. Mm -hmm. Wow, so they grow really, they really grow quickly. Very, very fast. And again, we feed everyone back here about three times a day. So they're getting a ton of nutrients from their food. And they're also getting nutrients from the light. That's amazing. Okay, so these jellies are pretty long live. Um, I think there's a couple of people that have mentioned um, that jellies are completely immortal. Um, I almost said immoral, but maybe that too. <laughs> a little bit of both, <laughs> a little yeah. bit of both perhaps. Um, is there an immortal species of jellyfish? There is. They call it the immortal jellyfish. Mm -hmm. It's not technically immortal. If you tried to end its life, it would work. But <laughs> what it does is when it gets to the end of its life stage, it can actually revert back to the polyp that we were looking at there. Mm -hmm. So it's almost wow. like it's like reverse aging and it can just start life over again. Fascinating. Yeah. That's really, really amazing. Um, great questions coming through. So once we have these tiny polyps that move into a day old, how many of them make it to adulthood? Is it a pretty good percentage of them? Oh, in terms of like once we get an aphyra, yeah. how many of them make it? Mm -hmm. uh, really a good about 90 plus percent. Wow, that's yeah, incredible. We've kind of got the methods down and yeah. people have been studying jellies for a really long time. So mm -hmm. we have a lot of information out there on how best to raise them. Yeah. So In the wild, it's probably a little less. It's got to be a lot, lot, lot less. less. Yeah, the ocean is a very scary and intense place. Yes, so. imagine being that small in the ocean. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Just a little terrifying. No big one. Um, oh, okay, let's talk a little bit about sea jelly anatomy. Yeah. Do sea jellies have eyes? They do not have eyes like we have eyes, so they don't have compound eyes, but they have something called eye spots. So they can sense changes in light in terms of like either being dark or light, but they don't see complex colors like we do. Amazing. And what about hearts and brains? Do jellies no, have those things? None of that. Yeah, they don't have a centralized nervous system. They do have a nerve net, so they can like sense uh, like different changes in the water, changes in current, uh, maybe temperature changes, but they don't have a complex brain like we have. No heart, no lungs, none of that. They're a pretty simple creature. Yeah, because they're closely related to plankton, or they are a type of plankton. They are technically a type yeah. of plankton because all they do is drift around and eat whatever happens to come their way. Sounds like a dream. Right. <laughs> Sounds like my life goal. <laughs> all right, TikTok, let's catch up on a couple more questions before wrapping up today. Let's see. Oh, I asked this to Josh a little while ago, but maybe you can refresh us. Yeah. Why do we call them sea jellies here at the Aquarium of the Pacific and not jellyfish? So these aren't technically fish because fish are vertebrates. They do have a spine and jellies do not. Invertebrates do not have any sort of spine. So we don't want to call them necessarily jellyfish because they're not technically a fish. Fascinating. So cool. And what other species of jellies do you take care of, Jen? Uh, so I take care of what we have on exhibit right now, mm -hmm. which is called a blubber jelly or a catastylus. Yeah. And if we have time, we can pop up there. Yeah, let's go check them out. I don't think TikTok has met the blubber jellies yet, and they're really cute. They're very cool. They're very cool looking. Oh, I'm excited. I haven't learned too much about these guys either, so I'm really excited to learn more. 
All right, so we are climbing up above the exhibit. Look at these guys. Yeah. They're so precious. And like I was mentioning before, they come in all different sorts of colors. Mm -hmm. It's just a pigmentation. It's not coming from their zozanthelli <laughs> or anything like that. They Someone just, just said, I'm like a colors. blubber jelly. I am also a blubber jelly. Aren't they adorable? They really are. And so these jellies are different from the ones we are seeing down there. Yeah, and they have a lot of similarities. Mm -hmm. uh, like I was saying, they do have zozanthelli. They think that they actually have less of them. Ooh. So they tend to eat more than something like a mastigia that mm -hmm. ne not necessarily needs energy from extra food. But because maybe they're not absorbing as much sunlight because they have less zozanthelli, they do eat a lot more food than the mastigias. Very cool. Someone just called them emo jellies. I and love it. I'm you're my favorite person. <laughs> Ever. That's incredible. These are so cool. Okay, so these guys, do they sting? They do. As well. Yeah. And their sting is also pretty mild. Mm -hmm. Again, wouldn't recommend touching them Not if fun. you ever see them. Uh -huh. But yeah, it's quite mild compared to our metals. Fascinating. And have you ever been stung by a jelly? I have. It's kind of just part of the gig. Part of the job. Part of the job. Yeah. It happens. Very cool. And we actually have jellies here at the aquarium you can touch, mm -hmm. but they are technically stinging you, right? They do technically sting. Mm -hmm. They do have those nidocytes, but our skin is way too thick for that mild of a sting, so mm -hmm. it's not something you would ever feel. We're very strong. Yeah. We are too strong. And do all jellies sting? Not all jellies sting. Mm -hmm. um, so something like a tinafore, which you may have met yeah. in Northern Jelly Lab, mm -hmm. that's not technically a true jelly, but we do call them foam jellies. And they don't sting, they have more of a sticky substance. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's kind of quiet today. I might go peek outside and see if we can see these oh, guys yeah. a little up close. Do you want to come with? Of course. Okay, let's go check and see. I'm going to walk down backwards and not fall <laughs> down. It hasn't happened yet. TikTok, and the day it does, you better not make fun of me. <laughs> All right, so. We are behind the scenes here at the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach, California. Uh, this is Aquarius Jen. My name is Madeline, by the way, I'm behind the camera. And we're gonna head out to the main exhibit to check out our blubber jellies and see how cool they are on the other side. It's kind of hard to see them above water. It doesn't really do them justice. And so the aquarium is open to the public right now. So you might hear some extra noise in the background. If you want to come visit the Aquarium of the Pacific, you can. You just need to make a reservation before you do, and you can do so at the link in our bio. Here okay, this are. is a way better view yeah. of them. They're so cool. So talk about their anatomy here a little bit. These guys are kind of like condensed jellies. They really are. Their shape <laughs> is really interesting, but I, again, they're just floating through the water. So whatever shape they are kind of helps them float along yeah. and capture more prey. So you'll notice their oral arms are really, really, really frilly. Yeah. And if you think about it, that just means more surface area for capturing things that are going by. You might actually notice some of them have orange. Yeah. Those arms. Mm -hmm. That's baby brain shrimp. There they are. Yeah. Very cool. And do they have a digestive system? No, not really. It's mm -hmm. basically just a giant gut. Yep. There's no like complex organs like in our digestive system. So it just goes in their mouth, gets processed, and goes out the same way. Fascinating. And yeah. the TikTok question of all time, do they poop? Do they fart? <laughs> no on the second one, but yes on the first one. Yes, they definitely do Everything poop. that eats yep. has to poop. Has to yep. poop. Has to go in and goes out. <laughs> this is amazing. Yeah. Hey, I want to thank someone just donated a bunch of money. Thank you all so oh, much. Oh, you. we just had an influx of donors. Thank you all so much for your support. We are a nonprofit aquarium here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. So we thank you so much for supporting us here on TikTok Live. We're live every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific. Thank you for joining us. Um, a couple more questions before we leave. Yeah. Why are they swimming upside down or seemingly upside down? So actually when jellies do that, especially if it's a photosynthetic jelly, mm -hmm. they're exposing those zozanthelli to more light mm -hmm. so that they can absorb more energy for the jelly. Fascinating. Yeah. And do you need any specific degrees to work with sea jellies if you're interested? It's a really good idea to have a marine biology degree mm -hmm. or something like zoology general biology anything in the realm of science dealing with animals will help you out in this kind of career fascinating mm -hmm. okay cool thank you so much to jen and thank you so much to josh who was chatting with us earlier and thank you to the jellies and especially a big thank you to our 11 donors who raised almost 200 dollars today for our nonprofit aquarium thank you all so much for tuning in these were the blubber jellies and you can come see them in person in our tropical pacific gallery which is open to the public right now you just need to make a reservation before you visit. Once again, if you want to continue this live stream, you can head over to our um, webcam section and watch some underwater live stream footage of our sea jellies. So very, very cool. All right, everybody. Thank you all again. Thank you to our 12 donors. I appreciate you all so much. And we'll see you next week here on TikTok Live at 3 p.m. Pacific every Tuesday. Bye-bye. Bye, Jen.